And these are what your bags look like once all of your templates and units are cut and put into the bags. Uh, bags two through five are smaller because they have smaller pieces in there and less fabric. And bag one is the jumbo bag because it, it has to hold a lot of fabric. So this is what they look like once everything is cut and now it's ready for the fabric. Next we're going to talk about choosing fabric. These are the fabrics I've chosen for the sample for this workshop. There are only six fabrics and the first, here is the here is the sheet from the supply list and the fabric requirement sheet. Now these are the fabrics that are on the sample quilt that Quiltworks made and they're from the Forever Collection from Timeless Treasures. So if we look at this chart, the first one is the dark log cabin and it's the red fabric. The second three fabrics were supposed to be different fabrics but they're so close together that I decided to just try it with one fabric for the light log cabin. So I listed the three fabrics here that Quiltworks used so you can choose one of these if you like, if you want to make a sample like they did. The next two fabrics on here are the light and the dark arc background. That's simply the background in the flying geese units and they have used the same fabric. The next two fabrics, the last two fabrics, are geese number one and geese number two. So these are the actual flying geese and both of these are done out of black fabric, a different black fabric. So let me cho show you what I chose for mine. I wanted something very colorful for the dark log cabin so I chose this because I like the colors in it. Okay. I chose this because the colors are really nice and this is from Michael Miller, it's called Up and Away, and this pattern is called Madras Patch. Very pretty colors in there. And so I liked, I chose this white fabric for the light log cabin. So this is, this would be what I substituted for these three, these three fabrics. So I substituted the white fabric with some little polka dots on it, little tone on tone white. And for the flying geese and the backgrounds of the flying geese. These two light ones are the arcs, are the background of the flying geese, and these two are the flying geese. So my fabric numbers, number one is the dark log cabin, which is this, and fabrics C2 through C4 are this white fabric. The light background C5 will be this one, this yellow and the dark background will be C6 the stripe. Geese number one will be this sort of tangerine color and geese number two will be this blue multicolor here. So when you're choosing your fabrics just I like to find one that interests me because you're going to see this one most in the in the quilt and I like to choose very colorful fabrics but that's me. So just find the fabric that you like that will be the main focus sort of of the quilt and then find a good background fabric or light fabric and then find your four fabrics for your geese. So it's simple to pick six fabrics. It's quite doable and I think the quilt's going to be really pretty. So when you first, when you bring home your fabric, the first thing I do is I cut a swatch. I'm going to put this to the side. Um, these are this fabric is just as it came off the bolt. And here are my two selvages together, down here. And here is the fold that it came off the bolt. So I fold these two together. Now I pre-wash my fabrics, and these have been pre-washed and sort of pressed. And they folded, I folded it like this. So the first thing I do is I like to take a swatch and I trim up the edge straighten up the edge and then I just cut off a half an inch stripe strip like this got a little wonky there but here are the other strips that I cut for the other fabrics and I'll show you what we're going to do with those we'll look at our fabric swatch chart so here's our chart And when you first bring them home, I like, I like to do this because 
if you put it aside for a little bit or you pre-wash it, you might forget which fabrics you used for what. So we're going to take this fabric. This is my dark log cabin. And if you cut off a half an inch, and then you cut off another inch, that will fit in this chart. So if you take your glue stick, put a little glue there, and put the fabric down. So then my next one is the white, so I've cut this white one. Cut off this selvage. And this one I'm going to put like this because we're just using one. Then the light arc is this pale yellow here. Cut an inch off of that. Glue that in. And the dark arc background fabric is the stripe. And we'll glue that here. And then the geese number one goes with the light background arc. That's this tangerine color. And finally, the dark, the geese number two, goes with the dark arc, which is the blue for me. Also, when you finish, once you finish putting these swatches here, save these swatch strips. Later on, we'll be using them if you want to mark to glue them onto your papers so you can keep track of your flying geese. Especially in this section here when we're doing the flying geese, it might be easy to get those confused, especially at the beginning. So go ahead and purchase your fabric, um, cut off the swatches as soon as you get them home, and put them in your swatch chart. And the next thing, if you are going to pre-wash your fabrics, then pre-wash them. After your fabric is all pre-washed, or you're ready to cut it if you don't want to wash it, and it's folded with the two selvages together, and here's the fold from that, and then you fold it again, so we have four layers of fabric here. And what pre-cutting is, we're just going to cut strips the certain length that we need for, for each fabric. At the bottom of this video, you'll see a chart or a table that is divided by fabric number. This is my fabric C2 through C4. This is my light log cabin fabric. And on the chart, we'll see that I need 15 strips, 15 inches wide. So we'll go, I line up my fabric on one of the horizontal lines on my mat, and I line the left side up on the zero line. This has already been trimmed and straightened. So we'll look for our 14, 15 on the line, on the mat, and we're going to cut one at 15 inches. Then we put this off to the side and move this down. Line it up again on the zero and on the horizontal. Put it on the 15. And there's our cut number two. So that's two of 15. And we'll keep going. of 15. And 4 of 15. Now on mine, when I have lots of yardage, I usually buy extra. One thing, because I pre-wash them and a lot of it shrinks. And when I, when I wash them, I usually cut them into 3 yard cuts and two or three yard cuts and so sometimes I have these little leftovers here and just these big cuts you have to make sure you have a lot of extra if you do that otherwise you just have one one long piece of fabric so that's pre-cutting and once I have all my 18 all my 15 at 15 inches I'll just stack them all together just as I, they're cut and I'll fold them enough to fit into bag and these will go 
into bag number one, this big baby. So there will be 15 of these, and we'll put these in the bag for now. So look at the chart. Take one fabric at a time, and it'll tell you how many strips you need and how big those strips are, and it will tell you which bag to put them in. So go through all of your fabrics one at a time and follow that chart and do all your cutting. And another reason I like to do the pre-cutting is, and I like to do it early as soon as I buy the fabric, as soon as I can, because if something happens, if I cut it wrong or maybe it did pre-shrink, it did shrink a lot when I washed it, then I'll be able to go hopefully back to the store and, and able to buy some more fabric if I run short. Otherwise, it won't match and I might have to buy, you know, five more yards of something else. So, do your pre-cutting and then you're ready to move on to the next lesson.